So in this episode, we're gonna be covering how to set up and work with your Rococo hardware and software and best practices for doing so. So for the rest of the course, we're gonna be working with a full Rococo performance capture setup. So what exactly does that require? Well, the first thing you'll need is a Rococo SmartSuit Pro 1 or 2 and Rococo Smart Gloves. On top of that, you'll need to be a Rococo Studio Plus user and subscribe to our facial motion capture package. Our facial motion capture workflow also does require an iPhone 10 or newer to take advantage of the true depth camera. We are actively working on an Android solution for facial motion capture, and we'll update this course when we release that product. And finally, you will also need to download Rococo Studio, which is our free mocap software. So let's go through what the final Rococo mocap workflow is going to look like. We'll have a Rococo SmartSuit Pro 2, smart gloves, and an iPhone running our free Rococo facial mocap app. All of these pieces of hardware will connect over Wi-Fi to a PC or Mac, which is running Rococo Studio. We'll be running through networking in more detail in the next episode. From Rococo Studio, we will use our live plugins to send out our mocap data to our character in Unreal or Unity. And at that point, we'll have a fully animated character running in real time, which can then be streamed out to the web. So let's jump into Rococo Studio and actually set up our smart suit and smart gloves. First, I'm going to connect my smart suit to the computer via the USB-C hub in the back of the suit. When I do, we'll get this pop-up that a suit has been connected. I'll hit apply new settings and then choose my Wi-Fi network and enter the password and set my receiver IP. So this is all fairly automated and easy to do, but you can always check out the resource doc for more links to other tutorials which will help you set up this hardware. After I've connected my suit, the information will be stored so that when I plug in my gloves, I can simply reuse the last Wi-Fi setup. Next, I'll create or I'll add an existing actor profile. Generally, we just recommend using your height and leaving the other values at default. If I drag my suit and my gloves onto the actor profile and do a calibration, I now have body and hand mocap data up and running. Now I just need to connect my Rococo remote app on my iPhone for facial motion capture. I'll make sure my iPhone is on the same Wi-Fi network, and when I open up Rococo remote, I'll get this little notification in Rococo Studio. If I click it, I can connect the iPhone, and if I hit accept in the app, and then turn on my facial mocap, there we go. Now we have facial mocap running in Rococo Studio. I can drag this face onto my actor profile, and now I have everything set up. I usually just keep the iPhone on a tripod or Joby on my desk underneath my streaming camera. So let's talk a little bit about the options we have while we're streaming our mocap data in Rococo Studio. Because the smart suit sensors can be susceptible to magnetic interference, our mocap may drift over long periods of time. Whenever we notice drift during a stream, you'll need to do a recalibration straight pose. Fortunately, there is an API so you can trigger these calibrations from your game engine if you want, or you can trigger it from within Rococo Studio or even from the Rococo Remote app on your iPhone. Another important aspect of live mocap is our translation or movement mode. Rococo Studio has two options, locomotion mode or treadmill mode. Locomotion mode allows us to walk around our space and move our character, and this is the default live filter mode. However, we can turn on treadmill mode, and now our character is locked at the origin point. So this can be a really good option for VTubing, because it ensures that your character will always remain in the same place. Okay, so now let's talk about standing versus sitting while you stream. The way that Rococo motion capture works is that Rococo Studio is calculating your character's position by understanding when your feet have contact with the floor and which foot you're putting your weight on. 
Therefore, we do recommend standing when you're V2ing with the Rococo system because that's how you're gonna get the best possible result. Now, that's not to say that you can't sit. We do have workflows where you can disable the legs and do some clever things in Unreal and Unity to get a really good sitting workflow working. I myself have streamed for over an hour sitting down and it, it can be completely fine. If you want to find links to those tutorials, I encourage you to check out the resource doc where we have more information on sitting workflows. However, for this course, because the best possible way that you can get accurate mocap is by standing, we will be standing for the rest of the videos. So when you become a Rococo Plus member, you get access to these plugins which allow you to live stream out your mocap to the various 3D programs. If we go to start live stream, you can see that we have all of these different plugin modules that we can enable. Let's turn on the Unreal one. Immediately you can see that we have this little notification about where we're streaming to, which IP we're using, and which port we're using. When we begin actually streaming to our avatars in Unreal and Unity, we will turn on the corresponding plugin and then make sure the plugin in that program matches all this information. If it matches, Rococo Studio will send our body, hand, and facial data out to that program and we'll be powering our avatar. So that covers Rococo hardware and software in VTubing, but in the next video, we're gonna take a quick look at best practices for networking, which becomes really important when you are using a mocap suit that's powered by Wi-Fi. Come join us.